Blog Talk Radio. Women have the power to transform this world. We can end crime and violence if we all agree to do one thing. Share. Let's share our wisdom, share our time, share our talents, share our finances, but most of all, let's share our love. This is The Female Solution. Join me, Naima Latif, every morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, as we bring you stimulating discussions about the issues affecting our lives. If you're listening online at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the dash female dash solution, press the blue button that says follow and get our daily topics every morning directly to your email and your smartphone. Hi, I'm Naima Latif, executive producer of the Female Solution Radio Show. We invite you to call in 515-605-9325 and participate in this daily think tank as we examine the challenges we face and develop solutions that restore peace and harmony. We are global transformers, changing the world from the way it is to the way it should be. We are one. Wherever we live on this earth, we are one human family. On behalf of our team of radio hosts, I'd like to extend a greeting to all the members of our family, whenever and wherever you may be listening around the world. To our family in China, Ni Hao. In India, Namaste. In Japan, Konnichiwa. In Korea, Annyeong Haseyo. In Russia, Zrastutsye. In Germany, Guten Tag. In Poland, Dzień Dobry. In France, Bonjour. In Spain, Hola. In Italy, Ciao. In Egypt, <coughs> Athen Wasalan. In Ghana, Akwaba. In Nigeria, Peleo. In South Africa, Saobona. In Senegal, Nangadef. In Kenya, Jambo. In Israel, Shalom. In Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Saudi Arabia, Assalamu Alaikum. Greetings, and may peace be upon you all. Uh, October 6th morning 2020 this is Maika and you're listening to let's talk about it with Maika and today we're going to get to the greatest fear that is found in the root chakra which is abandonment so many people suffer from abandonment issues and it's core it's a core core issue that's really in the root chakra. Of course, we've been dealing with the root chakra for the last three weeks because the root chakra is that chakra that grounds us to our physical reality. Everything in the physical world is right here or right there in the root chakra. If you don't get that right, you don't have a foundation on which to build. So we're going to be addressing the greatest fear that is located in the root chakra. Now, you're not going to be able to get to a lot of it because this is really a very therapeutic issue here when you're dealing with abandonment. So people with abandonment issues are going to need to seek further help from me or another therapist to really, really uproot abandonment issues which are very prevalent especially in African-American people. And I'll get into that later, why that is so pre- why it's so prevalent in African-American people. But before we go there, I want to go to the Sankofa 365 calendar, which is being turned into an app. Uh, let's see what happened on this day in history. Well, on this day, October 6th in history, the great voting rights activist and nonviolent activist, Fannie Lou Hamer, was born in 1917. She was the chairperson of the Mississippi uh, Freedom Democratic Party. 
which attempted to get seats at the Democratic Convention. And they failed, but they did make their voices known. Fannie Lou Hamer, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, was one of her models. And in 1929, the great minister and civil rights leader Joseph Lowry was born on this day in history. And in 1955, Anthony Tony Dungy was born. He was the first African-American head coach to win a Super Bowl. And we have some quotes for today. One is from Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he says, There really can be no peace without justice. There can be no justice without truth. And there can be no truth unless someone rises up to tell you the truth. <laughs> How about that? And then I have a, a, a quote by Dorothy Hughes, or Height, Dorothy Irene Height. And she says, greatness is not measured by what a man or a woman accomplish it, accomplishes but by the opposition he or she has overcome to reach his or her goals. How about that? You know, anybody can do stuff, but what did you overcome to do it? And one last quote, our falsehood spoils, one falsehood spoils a thousand truths. That's a Ghanaian proverb. So we want to keep those things in mind. There can be no peace without justice, there can be no justice without truth, and there can be no truth unless someone rises up to speak it. So today we're going to speak some truths, because there's never too much uh, when it comes to speaking truth. There's so many truths that have not been spoken that still need to be spoken. And the one truth that I'm going to talk about today is in relationship to abandonment, the abandonment issue, which is at the core of so many people's problems. Uh, and very few people have been able to address their abandonment issues because a lot of times they're just not aware that this agitation, uncomfortableness, and ungroundedness that they're experiencing has to do with abandoning the issues. So they go through life just holding on, just holding on to these uh, abandonment issues. <clears throat> now, there's a new uh, word out. It's called epigenetics. Epigenetics is how the experiences of previous generations affect us now. And that gets even more into the abandonment issues because you'll have things that have happened to people in your previous lifetime, or let's say not your previous lifetime, in your your ancestors' uh, lives that are affecting you in the now. Like we're learning that epigenetic changes may be passed down from parent to child directly affecting genes that are control risks for conditions such as obesity, diabetes, anxiety, and depression. So here you got issues from your parents. And then we have what's called historical trauma. You know, we got the slave trade. We got all of the generations of people who experienced enslavement here in America and the hate that it, it, it fosters, you know, people call it racism, but it's really hate. It was, a, it was a, the expression of hate by one people towards another, which was really self-hatred. You know, you, don't, you can't enslave another person without yourself being enslaved. You know, you know that saying, which is true. If, you got, if you're holding me down, and you're down also. You you don't have free mobility because you, as long as you're holding me down, you're holding yourself down. You're not expressing all that you have. And 
that uh, unfortunately is the state of what happened in America. You know, the one thing that the Americans, the European Americans brought and co-held on to that they got from England and the other European nations is the slavery thing, you know, slavery, punishment, all of that came out of Europe. That's why so many of the people who came to America were prisoners. They emptied their jails. They emptied their crazy houses because they didn't know how to treat these problems. So these problems just mounted here in America, and African-American people became victims of this insanity. And uh, so there's a a name for that. It's called post-traumatic slave syndrome, post-traumatic slave syndrome. And that was developed by Dr. Joy DeGruy as a result of her 12 years of research. And so we have a history of abandonment, abandonment issues that have been passed on from generation to generation to generation to generation as far back as maybe 15, 10, 15 generations. Well, imagine your father was a European who made it with your mother, but he denied you. There was abandonment in your lineage right there. And how often did that happen, where the European who fathered uh, so-called slave children denied them? Now, in slavery, the woman was the most important slave. Because she, 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 she was the one who produced children. She was the one who produced other females to produce other children. She was the one who produced the labor force. So she was the most important slave of all the slaves. She was. And so she received the most trauma. And it's, it's, an, it's, it's interesting that even today, that women seem to be the most important and are heading the household. It's almost as if a throwback to what happened in slavery, where men weren't allowed in the houses and women just ran everything. Well, if it don't, if you don't heal it, it's not going to go away. Some people think that in t- time will will bring about a change, but not necessarily. Time does not necessarily bring about a change. The same things happen over and over again that are not addressed and healed. You have to heal it. And we have so many of our people who who went through the drug era, you know, where crack was king or whatever they called crack at that time. These people abandoned their children. All of the women who went to to work and left their children at home as latchkey children. That's called an abandonment issue. So what we have is we have a history of abandonment. And abandonment issues can take the place of physical abandonment and it can also take the place of emotional abandonment where you're just not emotionally there to address the needs of your children. Or you aren't aware of how things occurred and your children are occurred. And like I have incident in my family two times, two times that I can recall. So there's more, probably more as I dig up my own seeds as a mother. Well, so one time I... I I decided that I was going to cut my daughter's hair into a short natural. And it was beautiful on her. She has a beautiful profile. But she was like 10, 11 years old. I didn't take into account how the children were going to tease her and make fun of her. And so in that sense, I abandoned her. I abandoned her to be ridiculed and made fun of and teased And I knew about teasing and all that because I had been teased as a young child when I was taller than most of the 
uh, girls in the classroom in particular have been so, that was a horrific experience being teased. So I abandoned her emotionally. I wasn't there for her emotionally to comfort her, to nurture her. And I'm the one that caused the problem, you know, in the sense that, you know, I cut her hair. I decided to do that. Now, she got a lot of compliments from adults, but at school, she was um, ridiculed, persecuted, shamed, abandoned. Then I had another incident where we were farming in this uh basically all European community in Ohio called Hiram, Ohio. And I sent my son to the local school, which was all white. I didn't take into account what he was going to go through in an all white school. I didn't, I didn't, I abandoned him. When he came home, I wasn't there knowing or conscious of the fact that he had been messed with by the other students because he was black. He was the only African-American person in the school. Well, I didn't take into account the effect of that. That's abandonment. I abandoned him to the racist, racist indignation and the, the teasing and, you know, all the stuff that folks go through in those situations. So those are some abandonment issues, emotional as well as physical. And maybe some of you have had some abandonment issues. Uh, abandonment issues can come up, say, say if a mother dies at childbirth. That's an abandonment issue. Not that she meant to die or she had any choice in it, but the fact that the child didn't have a mother or, say, a father as a result of their birth. That becomes an abandonment issue, a rejection issue. It's not that you mean to do it, that that's your intention. The fact of it is what we're talking about and how it affects the person. Then you have situations now that's just becoming more and more prevalent where fathers are absent from the household. Even in the 60s and 70s, when welfare declared that the father could be in the household, it's still an abandonment issue in the child's mind. The child does not have a father. The child has been abandoned by a major component needed in their life for healthy development, if that person is healthy themselves. So what we have is just a slew of abandonment issues that have never been addressed and need to be addressed. I mean, it has to be addressed if we're going to move forward. And then we have this pandemic causing even more. It's triggering this root chakra fear because now you have uh, the fear of loss, the fear of not having a job, the fear of financial instability. How how am I going to survive? How will my basic needs be met? How will I get food? How will I pay the mortgage? How will I pay other bills? All these things are at the root chakra and deal with abandonment. And what that does is it compromises the immune system by usurping our energy for the purpose of feeling and expressing this fear. And all that such fear requires us to do to feel safe and function in the world. So our energies, which would be better utilized working on the solution to these problems, is now upholding the fears that are mounting as a result of this pandemic. So these abandonment issues have to be healed because when you have unhealed wounds on the inside, then that's the lens through which you view the world. And so when you face your abandonment issues and your insecurities, 
it can be very frightening and and very gut wrenching. But when you really face them, they're going to give you great payoffs in living a happy life in the long run. But the feelings of rawness and shakiness that come up when you start to look at abandonment issues are, are challenging to address because we've already trained ourselves to run away from things like this, that we really don't need to deal with it. It's much easier to keep using our defenses of denial, blaming others, distraction, addictions, and the hordes of other things that we do to avoid our vulnerability and shame. But as a result, our wounds, they never heal. So we want to heal our wounds so that as we continue to go through the stresses and the trials and the storms and the tribulations of life, that we are strong and that we can overcome. And that's why I'm presenting this series, because I want you to be strong. I want you to be able to overcome. I want you to survive, for real, because that's a root chakra thing, survival. I want you to have a foundation of strength in your life. Somebody asked me, well, Michael, why don't you charge for these things? Well, if I, since you're me and I'm you, there's only oneness in the world, then me helping you is me helping me. It's, it, it's wonderful for me to know that I have strong, resilient, healthy people in my life or in the world, which benefits the world in so many ways. And so it's not a matter of money. It's a matter of principle. How about principle? But now if you need extra help, I am available to assist you, and I I will charge for extra help. Initially, these series are going out free of charge, and they can be accessed at any time in the archives of The Female Solution, and I hope you will send others to take advantage of this series on clearing the root chakra, basically healing the root chakra and opening the root chakra so that um, you have a strong foundation upon which to build your life. And then there's a basic distrust, just basic distrust. You don't trust nobody or nothing because you don't have self-trust. You don't trust you. Then you have unloved by parents. My parents didn't love me. How many of you feel like that? I remember a time I felt my mama didn't love me because the children had found a snake in the alley, and I was at the time I was afraid of snakes, and my mama went and she picked up the snake, and then my mama put her hands on me to scare me. She didn't put the snake on me. She put her snake hands on me, and I was just devastated. I said, my mama don't love me. I'm going to run away. And so I started running away and walked to the end of the alley. And then when I got to the end of the alley, it was like, now where do I go? And I ended up having to come back to this mama who violated me, right? I felt that she didn't love me. How about I don't fit in? Part of, I feel isolated. People tease me and make fun of me. And and I, I just can't connect with other people. I'm not lovable. And then another one is I'm not capable of taking care of myself or doing life alone. So then this, these people, they reach out for other people, you know. Uh, they attach themselves to people. Then they want up perfectionism. Everything has to be just right. I had a child, my youngest child was like that. Everything had to be just right. If his shoestring was too long and touched the ground, oh, he'd have a pissy fit. It was the craziest thing. I have to go tie this boy's shoe again. Then there's the fear of disappointment and failure. I'm a failure. I'm going to always be a failure. And you don't even see a future where you can be successful. That's not even a part of your vision. Then there's the I can't. I have a fear of success also, even even though I am successful. I have this fear of it. I know I can. So as soon as I get ready to reach success, I sabotage it somewhere or another. I feel misunderstood. I don't feel that people hear me. They don't listen to me. Uh, I'm hiding myself, and I'll just endure. 
I hide myself so that I'll be safe. I feel deprived. So these are all issues that we can address when we deal with this abandonment issue. I'm going to open up the mic of 706-202. Brain on some Grand on body. Rising. How are Grand you? Grand Rising. I'm Grant. Yes, Grateful. who's calling? How are you? This is Kwame Micah. Oh, Sorry okay. for the dog this noise. Is, uh, hi, Kwame. Kwame son how are you? Very great. Kwame Sunworth on the phone. But I was I was listening in. I'm up here in Maryland at the camp, and we're up the doggies protecting things. But you made a very excellent point in overstanding what happened when we were conceived. In our rites of passage that we train here with them, we ask the people to go back six months to a year before you what went on in the world before you were conceived? What was going How about on? That? Mm-hmm. Because that has a part in your growth and development in the womb. Because that parent, those parents, were affected by what was going on in the world, and so to have that insight as to what those energies were when you uh when they conceived you when you chose to come through so for the most part you're very much on point because you're rooted at that energy mhm so in being able to know at that time of conception and at that time of birth because those are two very important times. Conceived and then you left the protection of the womb to come onto the planet. So that has a great effect on how we interact in our world. And then you were talking about the other part. I was named after my great grandmother's husband's father, who was the Englishman. And in that was because I was the first boy born in three generations. For two oh, generations, wow. my mother, my grandmother, there were no boys born. So hmm. when I came, she honored that by giving me his name. So, hmm. and those were things in which I found out, and it began the process of me learning, even Kwame. In the African tradition, Kwame means I was born on Saturday. I'm the most ancient mm-hmm. defender of the past, one who brings peace to troubled water. Because on the mm-hmm. day in that tradition, you came on that day with a specific purpose and guidance of who you are coming in on that day. So all of these things are key to help us see how we are rooted to this earth and Mm -hmm. that's our root chakra so I thank you for you know bringing this topic to light because we have to understand who we are and what are we here to do right and I get trapped in the morass of all the things that affect us you know take our energies and cause us to view things from a, 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 a dirty lens 